SKQ1 is a powerful antioxidant that gets to the root cause of oxidative stress within your skin cells. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a brief overview of it. I have covered it in great depth previously, and then I'll talk about how it compares to other antioxidants, share my personal results before and after with using it, as well as going into other people's anecdotal reports. And then finally, I'll go into mixing it in my, with my own moisturizer. So as you age, your mitochondria become less efficient and then they create more reactive oxygen species, as well as your antioxidant defenses, they start to go down those antioxidant enzymes like superoxide dismutase. So it's a double whammy effect. And with SKQ1, it penetrates deep within that inner membrane of the mitochondria. So effectively think of it, so other topical antioxidants there, like a, like a fire extinguisher on that fire, whereas SKQ1 is literally going to the source of it. It's like a fire repellent in the first place. And this of course includes RS induced by UV damage. So, you know, less mitochondrial DNA damage there. And around, for a fair skin person, it's around 80 to 90% of skin aging is just from UV damage. And then uh, that, that crosses over in, you know, UV damage even um, induces things like uh, MMPs, uh, matrix metalloproteinases. So they signal to break down collagen and this actually blocks that. So you're indirectly, you're inducing new collagen. And then it crosses over into things like transepidermal water loss, like SKQ1 can just help with keeping that moisture within your skin. And I'll come back onto this on my own findings. There's also evidence it can speed up wound healing. You know, if you've got healthier mitochondria, then you've got better fibroblast function, you know, you're just more ATP production from the mitochondria. And so that can even just signal for collagen itself to be upregulated. And then, uh, you know, inflammatory signaling, that's very much driven by mitochondrial ROS. So then if you've got lower inflammation, then that can be linked with things like less redness in the skin. And then of course, mitochondria are very much a driving factor of cellular senescence, you know, so you're reducing the amount of zombie cells within your skin. And that's where the synergy can come in with other things, even just dietary things. If you're improving, uh, I've seen this a lot with people improving uh, glycation lowering improving their glucose markers that kind of thing and then that, that that synergy as well comes in with the skq1 just glucose spikes themselves are very toxic for mitochondria just something to keep in mind and then uh, you know talking about oral things you know like or versus topical vitamin c that becomes more of a nice to have if you're using the SKQ1. You could argue in those peak summer months, especially if you work outside, then the vitamin C is a helpful addition because it can help with oxidized melanin in your skin. But just generally, you know, the vitamin C is scavenging those free radicals from the mitochondria, whereas this, as I say before, it's get penetrating that in, in a membrane, reducing uh, the actual RS output from the mitochondria. I mean, yeah, yes, vitamin C can help with collagen synthesis, but that's where just having it, if you've got a good diet, supplementing, you know, to a certain level, then that should cover you. If you're, you know, if you're measuring your vitamin C levels, if it's above the 70th percentile, then you should be in like in a good position. And then you've got other antioxidants like coenzyme Q10. It's not very efficient at accumulating in that in a membrane on the mitochondria. So that becomes almost redundant doing that topically. Glutathione is a very important antioxidant, steadily goes down with age. And yeah, I've dealt with people that do not just the precursors like NAC and glycine or supporting things, you know, like selenium, etc. They also do glutathione injections or even like liposome more like a combination of all of that and uh, you know keep their glutathione sky high for avoiding you know like hyperpigmentation or emerging dark spots to try and reduce that and so again skq1 just can help there as well and when you look at mice models with skq1 it's been shown to both in aged mice as well as diabetic ones in speed up wound healing, improve the fur coat density, it's another sign of skin health. And then also there's a model with mice with a lot of UV damage and it was shown to uh, reduce that mitochondrial DNA damage. And you might be saying, well, we're not mice. And I, I believe there is good translational potential from SKQ1. The problem is, yeah, if you wanted to wait for human studies to be on it, you could be waiting a long time. And its mechanism of action are pretty clear-cut. It's a plastoquinone 
with a lipophilic cation. So what that means is it's positively charged, this, this design, and it's got a uh, lipid backbone. So it's able to pass through lipid membranes effectively, and then mitochondria, they're negatively charged, so it can actually get deep within there. They, you know, it tracks to the mitochondria rather than just floating around in the cell itself. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different biomarkers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. And that leads me on to my before and after face scan results. These are exactly four weeks apart. And the, the massive movement here, there's a few to be fair, and the one I'm really interested in is the emerging dark spots, 9% improvement. Same with UV damage, that's just repairing that summer damage that's been lingering for a while. And then also hydration massively improved by like 39%. And that just shows, you know, with uh, exomitin, that gel, I was using that consistently with that October test, but uh, the two days leading up to that, I wasn't moisturizing like uh, as consistent as I normally was. I covered this in the previous video. And so that just shows that you can't just rely on exomitin. It has synergy with good moisturizer that's well suited to your skin. Then you've got my firmness and skin barrier integrity. They both improved by 2%. So just great to see continuous improvements there. That has dropped off in the past where I've over exfoliated or just used too much glycolic acid. And then moving down the list, my redness that improved by quite a bit. And that's down to previously, as, as highlighted there, that's the Tadalafil. Uh, just increasing blood flow to my face. So, but some people naturally, it's, there's a genetic element to this. Some people just have more like a redder skin texture. And uh, the guy that tested me was actually saying that his comes in at 2%. So 40% isn't bad. And it's just keeping an eye on it. If you know, you don't want it to go downhill with age, you know, just signs of inflammation in the skin. You know, it could be using products that your skin is just not well suited to the it. And then on that subject of uh, redness, the the one that really does concern me out of all of this is all generally is all going in the right direction, but the uh, this, the crow's feet has actually that's gone by down by two percent. And the guy that tested me, he's done, he's been, he's very well experienced. He's saying my my eyes, my crow's feet look really really good actually. And he was just saying that the camera is very sensitive, and it was just picking up the corner of my eyelid like just a little bit of redness like along the corner as, as at the edge of my the corner of my eyelid when it's closed and I mean I have I've seen other people it's like a friend of mine she she got tested she's the same age as me and hers was coming at 38 percent there is a genetic element to it as well just the bone structure of your face but her crow's feet are definitely apparent and so yeah it's just something to keep an eye on and I'll come back onto that with my like new uh, moisturizer that I'm using combining uh, the SKQ1 with it. And then you've got wrinkles and fine lines. I don't really keep a close eye on that unless there's huge shifts one way or another. It's been like, hovering around, you even can pick up like little facial hairs sometimes. Uh, but the, the other one that has got worse was just my like eye puffiness and dark circles. And again, this is just purely on this test, I believe, because when I look at my recovery score that night, it was like 46%. My sleep quality just wasn't very good, it being a Saturday night just before that. And so, yeah, that I think like the previous one, I was much better slept. I remember on this Sunday, just the this November test, I remember being quite tired, not, not so much in the morning, but coming by late later into the afternoon and evening, I was really tired. It's good to see in general that things are improving. And then I'll probably wait till later in February to retest just to see if there's been further improvements over winter less sun damage and then when I do come into those summer months just protecting my skin that little bit better I was wearing plenty of sunscreen but this time on those really hot days when the sun's beating down and I'm out all day just wearing, wearing some kind of hat I mean I don't find hats particularly comfortable so maybe uh, just wearing like a like a tennis kind of visor so it doesn't mess up my hair either and then um, yeah just just keep an eye on those other things like that skin barrier integrity. Could it even improve further still over winter with just compounding all these things together, all my lifestyle protocols, and then even improve the eyes as well. Just to see like just redness in general, that's just a long-term project. Just try and improve these things over the coming next few years. And then uh, looking at just general reviews of uh, SKQ1, I mean, the company I get it from, Cosmic Nootropic, they released one showing someone that had been using it for three and a half weeks. 
And then as I mentioned before, you know, if you've got higher ATP generation from the mitochondria, you know, those fibroblasts are upregulated, better collagen production, just reduced inflammation, better faster healing of scars. And this this person had like acne scars on his cheeks and they, that healed faster. And someone I've actually dealt with that's used SKQ1, not so much acne, it's more like shaving rashes. They're just very sensitive to shaving and it just speeds it up. And when you look at general user reports with SKQ1 topically, people describe it as not a magic bullet, more like over time and, you know, your skin might just look more vibrant, more of a glow to it. And yeah, obviously it just takes time to really work because depending what you're using it for, for certainly for collagen, because that's going to take time. If you're reducing that source of ROS, it's not going to be overnight. It does take time. And I've been on it now nine months. And then that moves me over to my protocol with it. I have been using exomycin as highlighted before, just using that only in the morning, seven days a week. And now I'm migrating onto Mitovan, which it, yeah, it's, more, more pure i mean like the actual strength of it is a little bit up in the air when you look at they there's also you've got the uh, antioxidant uh, like concentrate of it which is only eight mil and that's the people uh, suggest it's between five and ten fold more potent than the exomycin i'm going to try and confirm the exact number here and then uh, so mitovan is somewhere in between that and so for me it's also so it comes down to cost as well like the exomitin has been very very it's not been bad at all i've been getting it to last like four even five months and so with this one now i'm using mitovan but the serum which is 30 mil but instead of applying it like a serum just putting a tiny bit on to be more time friendly because every little step you might say well it doesn't take long to put on a serum but when you're doing all these different other steps not just peptides serums on your face moisturizers when you're doing like taking lots you know i take a bunch of pills in one go but just so many different steps it just every little thing adds an extra minute say onto your day and so just being able to mix it with my moisturizer just it's just another thing another thing i can tick off my list and it literally only takes about a minute to mix it. I personally, I've done it with my day cream and I use that pretty quick, like probably around six weeks. And so I've done it in a 10 to one formula. So cost wise, it works out a little bit more than saying buying the Exomitin. Uh, but then I'm also um, using it with my eye cream as well. My like um, one from Kiehl's that I, I put on morning and evening. And so that one, because that's 28 mil, I did just over half a teaspoon. I've got five mil teaspoon. So just over that mark, but with the, obviously with the 50 mil Nivea Q10 cream, that's where I put in the whole teaspoon. And my eye cream lasts around four months. So overall with Mitovan, I will get some more use out of it than with the Exomitin. And it'll just be make some interesting content later in February. Just looking at my eyes, having the increased uh, SKQ1 in potentially a weak area not so much for wrinkles but yeah like just any redness like as i say just right at the corner of my eyelid and just see what happens in the future with that and remember little things can make a big difference with skin redness it's not just a sign of inflammation even just coldness i'm very very sensitive to the cold i mean in that test in november it was the skin test was done within five minutes of me entering the store and it was a cold day so in that one later in february if it's still cold in the uk then i'll wait a bit longer my girlfriend normally comes with me i'll let her go first she's less sensitive to the cold but yeah we'll just see with what happens with the eyes and on the subject of my girlfriend she has tried exomitin but she said it was just too waxy for her skin and so i'm getting her to, she will try at the mitovan she has a very much nowhere near as intensive protocol as me so just by adding it into her moisturizer is just an easy way to implement it and we'll just see over that winter time if she can repair some of the uv damage that she's done over summer as i highlighted earlier i got both my exomitin and mitovan from cosmic nootropic i've been using them for four years very high-end retailer good quality products, good customer service. So to summarize, SKQ1 isn't a miracle cure, but over coming years, then I think if you're just reducing that UV damage in particular, a little bit of collagen production, upregulation, this all comes together. And if you've got a good lifestyle, 
you know, like you're not smoking. I mean, my, myself personally, I can actually spot if someone's been a lifetime smoker with a good, reasonable accuracy. I can tell that they've been a smoker. And just so he's just doing all those no brainer things, the, you know, solid diet and then minimizing UV damage. And that can come together with a good skincare protocol where you actually do see a difference over time. So if you like that video, then check out this one on my, me mixing my own GHKCU topical serum, and that can boost collagen production by 70%. Thanks for watching, see you next time.